Digital video is everywhere, but the complexities and challenges of using it as evidence in legal proceedings continue to advance. This week, Simon Biles and I talked to Martino Gerion, founder and CEO of AMP Software. This is the Forensic Focus podcast. Welcome, Martino. Thanks for taking the time today. Hi, Krista. Hi, Simon, and thanks for having me. Hi. No, I'm personally really excited. I, I uh, we, we had a chat at the um, uh, at the Euro Expo, and um, I, I think this product is fascinating, and I, I am deliriously happy to sit and listen to you talk about it more. So this is a, a definite opportunity for me. I'm thrilled. <laughs> Great. Thank you. So I'm going to start off with my first question is um, there's a lot of educating the general public. And I think, um, you know, not just on your blog, but uh, just in, in general about video evidence, including um, issues around manipulation. Um, deep fakes are the big thing in the news right now, obviously. Um, you've also mentioned misattribution and, and speed estimation and, and um, just so many different variables. What are some awareness challenges that are actually unique to policymakers and other high-level stakeholders? I think at the root, uh, the biggest issue, which basically uh, it's on the foundation of all the other issues, is uh, uh, a kind of misunderstanding. They Most of the people just think that video is easy, just because everybody can hit play on YouTube, uh, look at vacation pictures, I mean, who needs technical skills to analyze a video? But uh, at the end, uh, images and videos are kind of uh, digital images and videos are kind of representation of uh, matrices. And what's behind them, it's pretty complex mathematical concepts. So if uh, you don't understand that, you can get things very wrong, especially on the forensic side. As long as we're speaking about vacation photos and movies, I mean... <laughs> Uh, little details don't matter, but can make a huge difference in court. Yeah. And uh, especially, I think the issue is that uh, uh, power uh, of video. And uh, because if you think nowadays between videos on social media, CCTV, a uh, picture from a mobile phone, there are very little cases when there is, uh, there is not video or, or an image. And from an image or video, often you can reply to the various questions of the 5WH investigation model. Who, where, why, when, how. And, uh, uh, and, and so we have a lot of responsibility handle this, this kind of evidence. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how does that translate? So like, I mean, there's, there's, um, there's educating sort of, um, I guess, like I said, the general public that might end up on a jury, yeah. for example. Um, but then there's also the um, the policymakers and and yeah. um, others that are, um, I guess, judges would be a part of that group that um, that need to maybe have different understandings, right? Uh -huh. um, so how does how does that like is um, what's kind of unique, I guess, to those groups? I think uh, um, again, uh, it's. Uh... Creating a culture at wide level, the problem, because as a society, we give a lot of power to images and videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, the people also start to recognize with deep fakes and other stuff that you mentioned before that uh, we cannot always trust. And I think for younger generation, they don't trust uh, images and videos so much uh, as older generation is. Uh... Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it's nowadays maybe it's not, uh, uh, I mean, it's like uh, writing a text, they, they see a video on Instagram and say, yeah, maybe it's real, maybe not, who cares, it's nice. <laughs> this is the, the point. So um, when we started creating this uh, awareness, we started with training many years ago, uh, experts, okay? Users of, of uh, Ampet 5 hour, let's say high-end software. And so these people had a technical background and we were kind of missing the gaps with the training. Then we started um, expanding uh, kind of our user base with the products like Ambed Replay, and which is still a software for, uh, um, let's say, working on video evidence, but for investigators, first responders, so people who has less uh, technical background. So we kind of expanded also our uh, training and our language and uh, we have a training called investigating video evidence which is uh, teaching the basics i mean what you need to be aware of then if the case is complex you need to call an expert of course 
And uh, then uh, we realize that there's much more. I mean, there is not just people who are working on the case. There is uh, the jury, the public opinion, the, there is the judge, the attorney, and very often even judge, prosecutors, they really uh, lack understanding of the issues surrounding the, the, this yeah. world. So we thought we needed to do uh, one more step and go wider. And this is a lot of the activities that I do. Okay. <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. Um, I remember I, I interviewed um, um, some um, uh, prosecutors for some research that I was doing um, not that long ago. But um, one of the things that they raised was, um, you know, that sort of balance between um, explaining to a jury what was going on and making sure they understood the the science behind it versus uh, putting them to sleep. Um, so there is yeah. that, definitely that that sort of um, strategy that uh, they needed to have the technical background to be able to decide how far to go with it, really. Yeah, it's, you know, the challenge is that uh, uh, often you need to explain pretty com complex mathematical right. uh, or technical concepts in a simple way. Mm -hmm. And then if you make it too simple, you can get it wrong. <laughs> and then the other side can say, no, you said something wrong. And uh, mm -hmm. this is the difficulty. Also, because very often in court, um, let's, let's say <laughs> this is a typical situation which happens. And... Maybe there is one expert who does a very uh, good, technically good and reliable uh, analysis, which oftentimes, unfortunately, is inconclusive because sometimes you don't have enough data. Then there is the other side who gives a much stronger and different opinion. Yes, we can see it's him or it's not him or whatever. And maybe the second guy who technically <laughs> didn't do a very nice job is just saying what uh, his customer want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he's even is much better speaking, and uh, and so he can convince the other side because I mean again, judge juries they don't have the technical background, so they cannot judge how to rely more than their gut uh, often. And this is a big issue for our legal systems. Well, it reminds me also of uh, there. There was the the line in the um, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, the NIST report that came out recently that um, uh, also was that um, two completely different examiners can arrive at completely different um, uh, results and both be right. Um, so there's that sort of wrinkle as well as in addition to what you're describing. Um, so, um, so it kind of on that note, um, what are, I mean, you're one of the blog posts you wrote recently, uh, mentioned international guidelines for video yep. evidence. What are some of the barriers to the adoption of those guidelines? Again, awareness, probably okay. knowing that yeah. they exist and uh, again, mixed misconception about the kind of video, other kind of, uh, uh evidence, other kind of, uh, uh stuff which is being worked on in forensic labs. Think about DNA, but even, I mean, mobile forensics, uh, computer forensics. There is a m more standardized workflow. With video and images, let's say intuitively say, ah, every case is different. One time I have to do one thing, another time another thing, which is true. But overall, the issues and the methodology that you should uh, adopt uh, should be coherent. You should have a predef predefined workflow for or at least a framework for the different situation that can happen because um, it's the scientific method <laughs> that we should follow. So it should be accurate as much as possible, uh, free from bias, errors, and stuff like that. It should be uh, uh, repeatable. So if I do the same processing analysis in one week or in one year, it should be the same and should be reproducible. Another expert should get the same result as I do, at least from the technical level, of course. And uh, because otherwise it's not scientific evidence and it's very, uh, very hard to bring it in court and uh, support it. <laughs> what What's unique about video evidence in that regard, though? Because what you've just said is, is brilliant best practice for handling mm -hmm. any evidence that's going yeah. to court. Um, you know, that's what we do on the digital front. That's what one would hope people do when they're dealing with blood or or whatever yeah. the wet stuff they do in that disgusting world. Um, so what is it that's unique about um, video evidence or image evidence that, 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 that might subtly alter the way that one would understand the scientific process? Are there any particular gotchas? Are there any particular uh, things that, that make you, well, make it unique 
Um, oh, in, in I, I think, design. again, uh, maybe I'm a bit boring, but I think it's the main problem, as I told you, awareness. Just think, think about, uh, um, I mean, CSI kind of fiction, okay? <laughs> guy from the DNA lab arriving yeah. with a white lab coat, very professional. And when there is to work with video, a random investigator just screams at the screen, hey, now's that, zoom on that, uncrop. So I think this is very meaningful of the attitude. Yeah. Uh, in a similar fashion, I mean, uh, we do a lot of trainings and uh, sometimes it's a problem to find the budget for the training, uh, even though they don't have issues finding budget for mobile forensics training, which is actually much more expensive than ours just because they think for that they need a tool and the training and the people. But for video, again, everybody can hit play. That's always the basic, uh, um, the basic issue. And uh, if we go into something, uh, uh, let's say more technical, I think uh, probably, it's a slightly more technical, yeah, a kind of uh, a different approach to authenticity and integrity of data, okay? So there are, these are two concepts which are often confused, uh, but they are quite different. So uh, integrity uh, or originality means that some data is original and unaltered since the time of acquisition, okay? Authenticity means that uh, it's a truthful representation of what it purports to be. And in images and videos, sometimes they are not the same because uh, uh, you may uh, have a video which has been, uh, I don't know, sent via WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever. So it's not the original anymore, but still, hopefully we could have the original and would be the best uh, opportunity, but uh, you can consider it even if it's been downloaded from social media and it's the only kind of evidence. So it's not the original, but uh, still good. Um, and then there is the concept of authenticity. Sometimes you have an original image uh, which does not represent the truth. So for example, when you're using it out of context in a fake profile, in taking a picture from a previous event. And this is also goes into another aspect which relates to, uh, let's say the enhancement of images and videos, which is something which often we do. Let's say, so you process images because you change the brightness, you uh, correct the blur, you uh, denoise the image. So the, the image is not original anymore in a sense. But what we are doing with the scientific process is uh, obtaining an image which is more authentic in a sense. I make you a practical example. When you do a picture with a wide angle lens, you have walls which are straight lines, which becomes curved. I think you have seen it many times. So if you want to obtain a more truthful representation of the scene, you need to correct the lens distortion, okay? The image is not original, but it's more authentic in a sense. And this is uh, underpinning the entire process of enhancement and analysis of images and videos, because you always want to get something which is more accurate than the original image. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I mean the 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 uh, CSI stroke zoom enhance thing is uh, is 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 a real issue, and um, uh, and and I mean it's the same across all of the the uh, the forensic industry, as far as I can tell. There seems to be this this illusion between what uh, the police think is possible and what is actually possible. So I I have uh, I have sympathy for you um, with regards to um, sort of your, your training or, or more to the point qualified people um we we i mean in in other areas of the industry we're seeing a um a severe lack of of trained people is it is it i assume it's exactly the same for you possibly worse are you uh, are there you know less qualified or less trained uh, examiners than there should be or or are required um yeah, yeah. i i definitely think so and uh Again, some people is put there uh, without the right uh, 
let's say preparation unfortunately and uh, but i see also I, I see a growth and improvement on that side and uh, i mean there is uh, a lot of people in our community and which is really great they do amazing job i must say but uh, still <laughs> we need more <laughs> okay i mean you guys you guys do training um and uh i you know i'm looking forward I, I have an opportunity to come on some of your courses later this year and we'll talk about that in <laughs> after that fact and we'll yeah. we'll be talking about that on forensic focus and, and and talking about your training but if somebody wanted to come along and get into uh into the industry uh what what would your recommendations be for 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 being able to do it uh it, i mean obviously your training courses and uh those are the best but but apart from that where, how should people start to, to look at this? I think it's uh, um, it's probably a bit dangerous to start real cases without uh, uh, straight away. There are a lot of uh, um, information available online. Of course, we have, uh, uh, if you look at our blog, uh, I mean, uh, I started it, it was like 14 years ago or so. We have almost 600 articles, I think. Even, I mean, we tend to do not, uh, I mean, there are software updates and usual, let's say, specific stuff, but also much, uh, uh, let's say, general topics, even for people who are not our customers, they want to understand a bit more the issues and stuff like that. Um, I think it's important to go um, side by side on the, let's say, forensic side, the image processing theoretical side, and the practical side. Uh, because, I mean, using the tools, just tweaking a few sliders, uh, I mean, it's uh, not bringing you anywhere or even bringing you in the wrong directions. Doing just theory without the practice is useless. And of course, you need to put the forensic uh, factor uh, inside it. So you should go in parallel in these three lines. And I think it's important to give, I mean, the field is very wide um, because we have the, let's say the digital media evidence side more related to video formats like uh, uh, video coming from DVRs in different formats. Uh, so starting playing with FFmpeg, reverse engineering bytecodes from uh, <laughs> different systems. There is the image processing side. So announcements, uh, the blurring, the frame averaging, super resolution, stuff like that. There is the image authentication side, uh, image and video authentication, understanding JPEG formats, deepfakes, uh, noise from sensors, stuff like that. There is the metrology side, so measure how tall is a person from a video, how uh, fast a car was going. So there are many different aspects and the risk, especially at the beginning, it, is that you go into a rabbit hole in one of these and you never come out <laughs> uh, because they're that are so wide and i mean e even if you look at the papers in literature there are so many that uh, it's easy to get lost so i think it's important to have a kind of 360 uh degrees view at the beginning and then focus on what's more important or you enjoy the most Brilliant. That seems like it would be um, almost challenging to figure out in a way just because of the nature of the the, the legal system, right? Um, I mean, Sai and I have been having this kind of conversation offline about uh, the legal system, the, the, just the amount of evidence. Um, it, it, it almost seems like you would have to know what to... Um, I guess in, in the US, we have a saying, what, what's going to get the most bang for the buck, right? The um, um, what, What's going to be the most um, important or influential um, skill to build over time that is is going to mm -hmm. have the most um, uh, the most impact um, and, and deciding like what that's going to be must be um, very challenging. Yeah, I think it really depends uh, on the country um mm -hmm. and in the kind of uh, sub field or unit that you are because if you do kind of more on the side of digital forensics mobile computer maybe the authentication side understanding where a picture is coming from is more interesting if you work on collision investigation uh, kind of crash reconstruction mm -hmm. maybe the speed analysis is more interesting 
if you work on video unit, of course, different video formats from any kind of crazy DVR system is your bread and butter. So I, I think mm -hmm. uh, uh, the problem will find yourself. <laughs> So with that in mind, like what kinds of um, feedback or what kind of traction do you feel like you're getting from your awareness building efforts? No, I think it's going very well. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, from our, uh, let's say, historical users, especially the most expert, uh, they are backing up very strongly because uh, we, we are kind of uh, uh, helping them uh, to solve the issues that uh, that they have, so they are very happy. Okay. Um, from the stakeholder point of view, uh, we have done a meeting at the European Parliament. We uh, replied to an inquiry from the UK Parliament, uh, and we are doing a lot of meetings with the institution at high level uh, in Europe and outside. And the feedback has been really great um, with respect to other, let's say, industries. Uh, I hear that people have been much more responsive. Um, kind of once we introduce the issue and the challenges and what could be improved, uh, people is really interesting and they follow up with more calls and, uh, and uh, want to learn more. Mm -hmm. So what we kind of uh, are planning to do now, it's um, uh, outlining some general principle, uh, principles to kind of jump start in a more practical way uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, this supporting and awareness uh, activity with the institutions. How so? Uh, simply try to define, because the problem um, is that there is, as I say, there is people who is very, very good in understanding and solving this problem. And there is people at the top, which is not aware of this problem. So we kind of want to define a relatively short list of uh, uh, principles that should be um, considered and taken into account, but at very high level. We're not expressing them in, uh, let's say, in, in very technical terms. Just explain from stakeholders or even, I mean, people in law enforcement, but who's not technical people, understand uh, what are the main steps you need to do uh, mm -hmm. and things to take into consideration to work well. Okay. And only once you set this kind of, again, uh, someone calls them guidelines. I think principle is more appropriate because are something that then everybody should kind of deploy into their guidelines, standard operating procedures or so on, but kind of, uh, uh, general idea of things that uh, you should not forget. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I guess um, that it, I, I'm sitting here thinking it sounds like the sort of work that uh, the scientific working group on digital evidence does. And um, I know, you know, you've been um, blogging lately about um, key questions about video evidence, which it, it yeah. sounds like this is kind of going down that path. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all on the same line. Yep. How how do the issues that you're you're raising or those um, those principles factor into efforts to standardize digital forensics practice? Um, I mean, particularly, I think in science is is more um, um, probably integrated with this than I am. But um, you know, standardizing in the UK, um, which is an actual um, effort to uh, that's underway. Um, how how is that factoring? How are how are your principles factoring into those kinds of efforts? Yeah, it's uh, again, it's, I hope this kind of principle would help the adoption of these guidelines with, mm -hmm. I mean, ZWIGD and uh, various uh, institutions and BMC and OZAC are doing an amazing job and, uh, of course, much bigger, much better than w w we could do it alone. Uh, but I think uh, uh, they should be more widely adopted mm -hmm. and uh, at all levels. Um, they are very, I mean, uh, for example, SWIG, did they have a kind of uh, um, uh, document for any kind of activities nowadays, even very specific. And uh, we want to help the adoption of this because I think uh, the entire industry can benefit from that. And uh, uh, so I hope with this, it's kind of doing a bit of advertisement for those because... <laughs> I, I, there are various guidelines, and I think uh, 
Uh, some goes more, um, I mean, the Zwicky ones are quite practical. The MC1 are, in my opinion, a bit more, uh, what can I say, rigorous from a formal point of view, but slightly more abstract. At the end, they are, they, they more or less uh, agree. And I think it more important than uh, adopting a specific guideline is using one yeah, yeah, rather than yeah. do every time kind of artisanal work and see, oh, every case is different. Yes, it's different, but again, you can follow a procedure. It's the scientific rigor that you need to, to maintain, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's, and, and as long as you're doing it in one of an acceptable range of ways, it doesn't really matter which one you've chosen. I saw a beautiful cartoon the other day, which was uh, uh, it was one of the XKCD ones that I think we're all very familiar with in the IT <laughs> yeah, industry. But it was um, it was like, oh, you know, there's 15 standards for this. Let's create a unifying standard, and yeah. then the, the next next frame is there's 16 standards for this. <laughs> um, so we need to be careful to make sure that we're not reinventing yeah. the wheel, rewriting it all. But absolutely. I, I, I think um, I think you're right. You know, having having a good standard that you rep whatever it is that you are repeating mm -hmm. is, is definitely the way to go. Well, I feel like that goes back to um, what you were saying earlier, Martino, about how you could have an image that is not original, but it's more accurate. Um, mm -hmm. You would still need to be able to do that in a way that um, that the expert can certify didn't change the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we're in the uh, and I'm going to sort of push you to a slightly more technical conversation uh, as opposed to the the thing is is that we're in a position now where we're seeing uh, the rise very much of things like computational photography where you've mm -hmm. got an apple iphone that is yeah is taking an image is that presenting a challenge uh to you in a software way that you're to to perhaps redact reduce the um uh the oh, what is it it's the beautifying functions of uh, of of some you know selfie software to to get back to the uh, to the original image. I mean, obviously, to a certain extent, everything that's being applied in that is a mathematical process uh, to alter your your matrix mm -hmm. of numbers to to make you look better. You know, mm -hmm. uh, as we do. Um, and if you know theoretically, you know the algorithm, you could, I guess, reverse it. But like, is there there must be data loss in the process of doing that? Is this something that that is challenging at the moment? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I actually wrote, I think probably six, uh, five or six years ago, a blog post about uh, the challenges with computational photography and uh, um, originality of pictures, of course. And uh, even more challenging nowadays because all this stuff is done with AI. And uh, another topic I brought quite uh, uh, a lot is the use of AI for um, uh, for forensic use of video evidence. Uh, you have a quite long blog post on that. And the gist is that for some kind of application like uh, enhancement, it is very dangerous. And uh, uh, basically, I, I won't go too, too long, but basically for two factors. One is that uh, AI with respect to traditional um, uh, algorithms, it's a kind of a black box, at least the algorithms that we are using now, not all, but most. And the intrinsic bias introduced by the training data set. So uh, if you train, uh, for example, the network with the, uh, people of a certain ethnicity and uh, gender, then uh, if you apply it <laughs> to another kind of people, then you can get quite wrong results, of course. Um, so. Uh, coming back to your uh, original question, yes, this computational photography is uh, a big problem. And we actually uh, published a paper um, on uh, uh, the issues that we have with modern smartphones on uh, the use of PRNU. Maybe you heard PRNU mm -hmm. is, uh, stands for photo response non-uniformity, and it's uh, sensor noise, which is used to... Um, identify which camera has taken a picture uh, just from the picture itself without metadata or anything else. And traditionally it was very reliable. Even if you send pictures through social media, process them uh, uh, to an extent, uh, this kind of noise fingerprint was still staying there, but with the pictures, especially with the pictures uh, um, in kind of po portrait mode, this is not working very well anymore. And uh, 
we published a paper, a scientific paper, which has been quite popular, let's say, and at least we can recognize them. Uh, we, we can recognize when it doesn't work anymore. Uh, but a solution uh, which works, let's say, in a robust way, not just in synthetic tests in a university lab, it's uh, still not found. We are still working on that. Uh, but it's one of the main issues which is coming with uh, with the new technologies, you know. Yes, yeah, things things that make our lives better and forensic analysis harder. <laughs> <That's the problem. laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. And um, I, I probably imagine this isn't too much of an issue, but are you finding um, that size of um, images is 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 being a factor? Because obviously we've gone from. Um, well, early cameras with two megapixels uh -huh. to, uh, you know, I, I, I have cameras which have 50 megapixels. My phone has, well, I don't know, however many, but we're getting up to 4K, 5K, 8K video. Uh -huh. Is this, is just sheer volume of data being an issue in terms of video analysis? Or is it is it just throw more processor at it and you can still do uh, do everything that you want to? There are two aspects. One is the... Uh, raw power that you need that you need more of course and in fact a big uh, a kind of project uh, uh, that uh, we were doing on the development side this year was to exploit better the hardware and uh, go faster because <laughs> there is more data we need to go faster but the other is that it's uh, for most of our practical application is a kind of fake improvement so we see this uh, surveillance video which uh, improve in resolution on paper, but then they are much more heavily compressed. So you have maybe eight times the number of pixels than before, but then when you zoom in, it's all kind of blocks of the same uh, uh, of the same color or there are artifacts. So in practice, I don't see uh, often uh, benefit. This is, it's better to have a more performant um, sensor, less noise, uh, better configuration or less compression than having this uh, 8K video with blocks like this big. <laughs> a lot of the, the, the issues, Martino, that you're describing um, kind of factor into it feels like the, the general public as well as marketing teams like to uh, talk about how rapidly te technology advances uh -huh. um, and then how hard it can be for vendors to keep up. And I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, listening to, to you thinking like there's got to be a tipping point at some point um, where, uh, you know, it's, it's just going to go too rapidly and vendors may not be able to keep up at, at some point. But on a practical level, um, how does that tie to issues? Um, I think deepfakes is the biggest example. Um, but I mean, tools like Amp Authenticate, um, uh, how are you incorporating the latest research that's coming out? Um, I, you know, you mentioned PRNU before. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, how, how are you incorporating research? Yeah, we, we do a lot of research. Yeah. And uh, also, let's say for fun and experimentation, not, uh, I mean, the real research is that uh, the, the more risky one when it's not directly tied to uh, let's say a product, yeah, because yeah. if it's uh, successful 100% of the time, it's not research, it's development. Mm -hmm. um, so we do a lot of experimentation and that, and we've been researching uh, deep fakes and uh, gun images. Gun images are those like uh, synthetic uh, uh, faces, like this person does not exist at com, uh, this kind of stuff mm -hmm. for a few years now. Um, for uh, GAN images, actually, you have a quite nice solution, uh, which I think we will release uh, uh, soon. We actually participated into a um, uh, GAN detection competition with other research groups, and we uh, got the second uh, spot. So it was quite a nice result. Yeah. And for deepfakes, uh, we are still working on that. Yeah. And because we believe that uh, it's still a kind of cat and mouse game, it's working nicely, but then, uh, I mean, even th there are a few systems uh, that you can play with uh, uh, online, uh, and they work in easy cases. But uh, I mean, in real life cases, when maybe something is heavily recompressed on YouTube, or you just uh, flip the video or stuff like that, they stop working. And uh, I hope next year will be. Uh, uh, ready to launch uh, some additional deepfake, uh, uh, specific deepfake tool in Authenticate. Mm -hmm. There are some of the existing filters which work in some situation with deepfake, but is not a specific deepfake uh, detection. 
On the other hand, very often the is the opposite that you are interested about. Not much uh, showing that it's a deep fake, but proving that it is not a deep fake. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because maybe you have someone bringing the evidence, say, no, it's not me, it's a deep fake. Mm -hmm. And that is much more easy because you can look at the uh, format of the file to see if it's an original coming from a device and not a computer generated video or image. We have video tools, again, like the Purenew or the uh, VPF, which is uh, uh, detecting, uh, um, let's say, double compression uh, mm -hmm. on videos. In, also, in this case, you can, uh, um, it, it can help determine if a video is original or not. So maybe you cannot take it for now from one side, but you can take it from the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do people um, approach you as a company directly for 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 doing um, some of this analysis, or are you are you purely a vendor for products? So do you do no? We are well? uh, we are purely uh, we, we do the, the the software and the, provide the training, but we don't do services. Okay. I did uh, on personal basis, and also let's say as a company, uh, and also some uh, are several of the people in our team. Uh, did it, uh, someone still does it on personal basis from time to time. But uh, uh, I, I think at a certain point, uh, um, you need to decide what to do. <laughs> yeah. um, also because uh, um, let's say that uh, the conflict of, conflict of interest, if you do a lot of case work is a bit high in my opinion. Mm -hmm. What if I go to court and testify against one of my customers that I trained? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, that's fair that's fair yeah. um so so in that regard how are you um making sure that you're delivering what um your customers want i mean you 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 know you have a robust feedback process from your customers or are you looking at just what's moving in the industry as a whole or um you know how how are we making sure that amp five yeah. is is actually you know um a, a a useful tool to apply to 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 the to the tasks at hand yeah there are different uh, uh different factors the problem is not uh, having ideas is uh, prioritizing them because if we look at our um, i mean database of feature requests and improvement requests i think we have more than 3000 items between the various products so um but we are in continuous contact with our users. I think probably one of the most valuable resources that we have now is uh, uh, a Discord server that we have. Uh, we launched it uh, at the end of last year and we have uh, several hundreds members already that uh, exchange ideas, opinion, and suggest uh, when there is something that in their opinion should be improved or some big function that they would want. Um, in addition to this, um, also a lot of ideas come when we do technical support. As I mentioned, several of the people in our technical team are former uh, users of our tool, uh, mostly from law enforcement and military. So uh, they know very well <laughs> what's needed, what works, and what uh, what's needed to improve. So um, there are there is so much to do that it's. Uh, I mean, the problem is really understand w w what to do first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And at the moment, you're currently, you're a Windows platformed software, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. All of our tools are uh, desktop software, let's say, Windows-based. Are there any plans to perhaps migrate that out to uh, Mac or, or Linux? Because one, you know, like obviously you're heavily algorithm-based, and I, I would have thought mm. that, that your, your software would translate well potentially to the two um he says kindly about Windows, of which he's not a terribly big fan, um, to, to something like Linux, whereby you could build more powerful clustered computers in a way that, that might um, leverage some of that extra processing power. Is that something that you, you are this is in that roadmap of 3,000 requests that you're considering at the moment? No, no. Uh, actually, it was in the past, but I think for our kind of users nowadays, the market share, uh, I mean, it's hugely in favor of Windows, so there is so much more important stuff to do. <laughs> Fair enough. But, but the technologies that we are using are all, uh, uh, let's say, mostly, mostly cross-platform. We are not bound to Windows. So I mean, in the future, there's not uh, 
potentially we could do it with a bit of effort, but it's not impossible. So you've got, um, you mentioned your Discord server, uh, you've got your blog, um, YouTube. Um, I think you also um, do user days, right? So connect with um, with customers yeah. and others, yeah. Yeah, we did it uh, um, for a few years in person, then okay. COVID came and everything went online, which to an extent is also good because, uh, not, not the COVID first, yeah. but the online, <laughs> because we had m more many uh, participants yeah. Yeah. last year. Exactly. Um, we are repeating it this year. It's actually in two weeks. Oh. Uh, so if any uh, of our users will listen to this and is not registered yet, they can register on our website. Uh, we're also doing, again, a survey, uh, mm -hmm. which actually open to anybody working on uh, the uh, in, in our industry and working even, uh, I mean, occasionally with video. It's not just for our users, but it's just to understand the perception of the various issues. Mm -hmm. And we will present the, the results of the survey in the user day and on our uh, blog with analysis of what are the main issues uh, uh, and what is the perception of the evolution of the, the industry and the field of video evidence in general yeah. in the past few years. I can't wait to read that. That's going to be really interesting, I think. Yes, yeah, completely yeah. agree. Well, Martino, thank you again for joining the Forensic Focus podcast. It's been a really, really interesting My conversation. Pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, thank Great. you. Yeah. Okay. Thank thanks you. also Bye. thanks also to our listeners. You'll be able to find this recording and transcription along with more articles, information, and forums at www.forensicfocus.com. Stay safe and well. Mm -hmm.